Hey everyone. Well, I made her back safe and sound. Had a great trip. Lots of beach time. Uh, wedding was great. Hang out with some good friends. Lots of drinks. Maybe too much. Maybe too much food. Anyway, uh, it's great to see everyone again. Back in the, in the thick of things here. So you might notice I've got the truck inside here. I have to do a road trip. So I have to get that head down to a place called Swift Current. Saskatchewan. It's about two and a half hour drive for me and I want to take the old truck with me. So you might say, well, why are you heading down the Swift Current? Well, I'm heading the Swift Current because I picked up a 400, a 1979 400 uh, Ford engine with a transmission mounted on it. Came out of a one ton, three, a 350 F-350 one ton. Now you might ask, well, what do you want that for? Well, I'm not putting it in the truck, but what I did do while I was in Mexico, sight unseen, bought a 78 Ford Bronco, and it doesn't have an engine. Originally, it, it came with a 400, and uh, they're not that common around here to get a 400 engine, so when I saw the one come up uh, on the marketplace, I, I bought it. And Nick, Nick Vintage Thunderbird Repair, I know how you feel about sight unseen purchases, and I fell for it, so I did it. So I'll have to pay the consequences if something goes wrong or it's not what I was looking for. That's, that's the, the risk you take to have the freedom to do those things. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm going to risk it. Uh, the, the Bronco, the gentleman that I bought the Bronco from, and that vehicle is in a different location. It's in Regina, Saskatchewan. And it's about two and a half hours away as well. But he's going to deliver it for me. So uh, he was gracious enough to, to, if I could wait a little bit of time, that he would uh, deliver that uh, truck to me, that Bronco. Uh, he has to come up to Saskatoon to do some work, and he's going to bring it up on April 2nd. So we won't see the Bronco just yet, but I will insert pictures right here. So anyway, um, there's some pictures of the Bronco, and you'll see by now that it's not rust-free, because, hey, I don't really buy rust-free stuff, as you know. So I'm still on this particular Bronco. I'm not sure what to do with it. I, I haven't seen it. And that's the sight unseen thing. So you don't know what you're into. But I've been considering doing a full quarter panel on them or a partial portal panel, um, quarter panel, like a, a, a repair panel. Uh, I haven't had a lot of luck with the repair panels. I found that the, uh, this wheel arch area here, I don't know if you can see that, never is right. It's always off a bit and it doesn't look right. So I'm not sure about that. New uh, quarter panels, I priced them out with uh, Blue Oval over in, uh, in Ontario, $618. Basically what it comes down to with Purchasing and shipping, they were a little over $1,000 a piece. Now you get a full quarter panel. Also, they sell uh, partial panels. So the shipping is somewhat less on the partial panels. And the partial panels that I would be getting would go, that would cover the whole wheel arch right across. <clears throat> like, a, I know you didn't see that, but right across the wheel arch of that Bronco. Then you still have to deal with the, the rear bed uh, section on the back corner of the of it down in here if you can see that or not which isn't hard to build I could make my own uh, I've done it before but do I want to do that I've had some uh, comments in my videos that hey why don't you just put a panel on and <clears throat> I'm probably not wrong I mean you could you could do it uh, but I'm not sure if I need to on this Bronco I won't know till I get it so we're kind of just guessing at this point. But anyway, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to tackle this uh, couple of little projects on this truck and uh, get her out the door. And hopefully tomorrow I'll head down to Swift Current and pick up that 400 engine. All right, let's get at her. Just a couple of little jobs and I'm going to take you along on the drive to Swift Current as well. It won't be uh, spectacular, so I'll sp speed it up a lot. It'll be gone, uh, go by pretty quick. It won't be two and a half hours for you guys. Well, it looks like this truck isn't going to head to Swift Current tomorrow. I topped her up with gear oil, and it's running out almost as fast as I put it in. 
I thought it looked wet down there. That's why I was going to check it. So I don't have time to change this uh, seal and Lord knows what else you'll get involved with, with when you start doing that. So I'm going to have to uh, rent a trailer. Well, I'm going to put this out. It isn't going anywhere this way, not that far. Uh, so, on to plan two, or plan B rather. Well, off to uh, Swift Current to pick up that engine. Using my wife's car because I uh, didn't have a seal for that truck. Anyhow, no big deal. I said earlier it was a two and a half hour drive, but it's actually three hours. But I got to go pick a trailer up. I had to rent a, a U-Haul trailer, so we'll go do that first, and then we'll head southwest, down through Saskatchewan. <laughs> All right, everyone, let's go. Well, there she is, all loaded up. Need to put it in with a forklift. Uh, it's a place of business, so I didn't want to video a whole bunch of people around. So anyway, heading back to uh, home now. Hopefully she stays all right. Strapped down, got some blocking under it, tires in case it tips. All right, see you when we get home. One Ford 400, 1979. Now this engine here um, was supposed to have been rebuilt. Oh, I pulled the plug wire off, but that's no big deal. It was rebuilt 5,000 kilometers 
before they shut the truck down. Come out of an F-350 Ford. Uh, it came with the alternator, power steering pump, um, carburetor, everything as you see. Transmission, I don't need the transmission in bell housing because I'm using it on an automatic on the old uh, Bronco when I get it. But there she is, she's out of the, out of the rental unit. And it's a nice looking engine. I'll clean it up some. You can see it's been used some, for sure. So uh, let me uh, get her cleaned up. And uh, hey, who wants to, who would like to see this baby bark? Anybody interested in seeing it fire up? Well, there's one person that's interested in seeing if she'll kick over and fire up is me. So let's do that. Let me get the stuff all put away and ready to take this trailer back and uh, probably tomorrow I'll come out and I'll uh, see if this baby will bark. I do have, I was glad to see it because when I went to look at it, they left on the ignition plugs. Where are they? They're here somewhere. I know they're on here. I'm pretty sure that they left the ignition plugs on, but I'll trace the wires back to see if I can find them. I don't really see them though. I thought I saw them. Anyway, we'll worry about that because it needs a Duraspark, Duraspark system. This isn't a uh, points. These, no, here they are. Yeah, there's one there. I think that's it, a pair of them. Anyway, um, let me get her, like I said, let me get her uh, everything all situated and we'll see if this baby will fire up. Well, it's more than one day later, it's two days later. I've been out fiddling with this engine. I've had things to do. I had to take that trailer back and whatnot yesterday and uh, other things that had to be caught up on while we were in Mexico. But um, I did take the power steering pump off. I took the alternator off of it. Uh, what else did I do? I took the fuel line off and now I'm about to, uh, oh, when I measured the stroke. I wanted to confirm that this was an actual 400 engine, not a 351. And uh, so I just used my screwdriver. I videoed it, so I'll insert the video here on how to do that. So this is number one cylinder right here. Now it's all the way down. So <clears throat> what you need to do, really the only trick of it is, find a spot that you can always measure exactly the same. It doesn't matter where on the screwdriver it is, as long as it is always the same spot and the same angle, roughly. So what I've done, I used this spot right here with the, with the uh, marker. So I just laid it flat like this and make sure it was always in the same spot. And I held the screwdriver tight against the, the valve cover lip. So I'll go down there and you'll see the upper mark is right there. There's the upper mark, and that's the one I marked it'll go down to now. It's like this. So what I did, I would just go in here and tight against the valve cover, and I ran my marker. I hope you can see that. I just ran my marker there and marked it. So that's marked. So now I'm going to put this in. I'm going to back this out and make sure you don't leave that just in there. It'll jam it. You can make sure that's got to run free, that screwdriver. You can't just leave it laying in like that. You can use a wooden dowel or anything, but I had the screwdriver that's long enough. So now I'll back this out to, to top dead center on this, on this cylinder. This is number one cylinder. Using a 5 16 socket on the crank bolt. And we'll bring it all the way up to top dead center. And that feels like it. That's right in the dwell zone right there now. And then I'll mark it again with my marker, like so, flat on that top of that uh, valve cover bolt, head right there. And there's my marks again, and they're exactly where I had them. So I take my measuring tape, and this a 400 will have a four inch stroke. And that right there, I don't know if I can see it, because you guys can see better than I can. That right there is a four inch stroke. See, right there. All right, so you got to see how I did that. It's pretty straightforward stuff. So this engine, as you already know, is a genuine 400, four inch stroke. 
and a 4 inch bore I assume because if it's a 4 inch stroke it'll be a 4 inch bore which means it's a 400 engine 444 four, four. anyhow I want to pull the plugs out put some oil down the cylinders uh, bumper over and see how it turns over with the starter well there I got a little oil in it and put some transmission fluid in over there and I also put some deep creep in just to help it along it's spinning nice but I wanted to just point out something that maybe somebody kind of not familiar with these old engines and uh, that have a timing chain in them. If you want to know the condition or rough, just a rough uh, condition of your timing chain. And I did this, this, that's what makes me think of it because I want the guy that I bought it from said there was about 5,000 kilometers on this engine. Now I don't know how many hours and that's the important part, but uh, in kilometers so you if you even you double that um, there shouldn't be a lot of wear on the timing chain so I wanted to check to see how accurate this was so I've got my uh, 15 16 on the crank here and I've got it I've already spun it uh, clockwise so I'm going to turn it back until I can feel the uh, timing chain it'll loosen a tiny bit and then it'll tighten back up on the camshaft sprocket so it's not it's not going to take much with this because I verified that it hasn't been worn much. So you just watch down there how much this actually moves. Right there. So that's up against the uh, cam sprocket. You go the other way, same thing. You can mark it if you want, but when they're really worn, you'll see, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I'll turn it a little bit now. There, it's against the timing chain. Actually, it went a little bit beyond. Um, so whenever you're doing these, if you can get, like if you have like a quarter of a turn play in these, like say that goes like this, that's extremely, that's your timing chain's worn right out. And this engine, if it was like that, this wouldn't have been rebuilt without putting the timing chain in. But this one is very minimal. Right there. So it's a small amount, and there is a certain amount of slack in those chains anyway, and it does have some hours on it. So I'm happy with that. So a little trick, anybody's kind of going to buy one of these engines and you're told it's been recently rebuilt or it was rebuilt in X amount of time, and you put something on the crank and you turn it and you're getting up to a quarter of a turn, that timing chain will be worn out. And that means they probably didn't rebuild the engine either. So that's something. So now, I have it uh, spun over quite a few times with oil in it. So now I'm going to, I took the starter off because I wanted to check the starter without jumping it. So I'm going to put the starter back on. The starter was uh, dragging, well I thought it was the starter. Turned out it was my battery was low. So the, the, the starter seems to be jumping well right now. Engaging well I should say. Now I'm going to put it back on the engine. I didn't want to do it ahead of time because I was afraid that, uh, you know, you want, to, you want to do the oil thing first. So I'm going to put the starter back on and then it'll tell me the condition of the ring gear and all that stuff. And hopefully it'll spin easily. If not, well, it's got to come apart anyway. This engine is going to be on an automatic transmission, so all this stuff has to come off. So let's put her back together quickly and I'll boost her over and see what happens. Well, I got her geared up. I put the pigtails on here. I don't like jumping off the posts as it melts the posts a bit. So I got the power here and I've got the ground, the original ground hooked up to the battery. So let's see what happens. There. Well, I'm happy with that. Uh, the starter's a bit woggly sound, not woggly sounding, but a little bit grindy sounding. It may just because we're right next to it. And uh, I put my little guards over, which I didn't see much come out, so I didn't get a lot in there, but it's turned over nice. There's some oil come down on the manifold there. So that's good. So now the next step is I have to gear up the ignition. There's a Vacuum line I'll plug off, but I'm not going to run this for any more than just to fire it up. So yeah, the next is to get the ignition hooked up and uh, see if this thing will kick. 
Now one more thing before I put the spark plugs back in. They're all about this condition. They're about the same. A little bit sooty, but not bad shape. I'm going to change them. These are an old set of champions. And actually they had dielectric grease on them. So someone actually uh, did it right. Good. Alright, I'll put the plugs back in and we'll get this ignition hooked up. Okay, I've got my uh, DuraSpark box on. I have it grounded to the engine. And I've got the power wires, so the white, the white is for start and the red is for run. So if this were on the, if there was going to the firewall, to the fender well, this would be the, on the uh, solenoid, on the uh, ignition side. Anyway, before I fire, before I try doing anything with the uh, ignition hooked up, I want to try turn it over one more time because that starter sounded odd to me. Something was wrong in there. So let's have a look. Let's see if we can uh, bump it over. We may end up taking that starter back off, doing something with it. All right, I've got her hooked up. Uh, I moved the crank a tiny bit. And uh, there's something wrong with the ring gear on this thing. So I got the ignition on. I gave it a little quick start. Let's see what happens. I don't know if I got it, have it hooked up right or not. Let's try this. She's jumping over on the ring gear. So I'm going to make a couple changes. I'm going to do some testing. I'm going to see if I have power to the coil because that may not be, I might not have power to the coil. All right, give me a few minutes. Okay, well, I think I have some something figured out this time. And I got a little bit of gas. Where's my gloves? I want some gloves on. There's a pair of gloves right here. Oh, yeah, these ones. All right, so I think I've got something figured out this time. So I, I powered the, the module box on start. And, if I, and I also put power directly to the coil. So I'm going to give it a little bit of gas. And we're going to try her again. Hopefully this will, I won't give it much, just a little bit. Hopefully it stays on these jack stands. <laughs> I'll get back a little bit in case it falls over. Pretty secure on there, I'm pretty sure. All right, I put power on the coil. Let's try her. Oh, that one come off. Hold on. There. All right, try her again. Oh, I got to turn that crank again. There's a dead spot on that flywheel. All right, let's see what we can do here. Yeah, I can feel it every time. That's what that grindy sound is. All righty. No, she's not kicking. All right, I'll try her one more time. If I can get it even to bark, I'll know it's right. There, that starter's kicking out. You can hear it each time. All right, that's on there. That's on there. Let's see what we can do here. Well, <laughs> she kicked. <laughs> All right, a little more gas in her. Hopefully that starter, I'm going to turn the crank too. I'm going to put a little in the, a little in the bowl. I don't think that's going to help. I think I'll just put it down here. I don't want it to run long if it runs. All right, I'll give that crank another little, that, uh, a little turn on the flywheel. Whew, we got smoke happening. <laughs> there. Let's see what happens this time. You can't leave 12 volts on these coils very long. That overheats them. They only run 9 volts when the engine's running. All right. All right. Well, now I know it runs. I'm going to hook up the... Ah! We got her. <laughs> All right, I'm going to hook the coils and stuff. Done. All right. 
I don't want any damage to the boxes or anything. That sounded good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch over the power to run on this one. And I'm going to try it one more time. A little more gas in it. First I'm going to open the door. Whew, the, the mice stuff came out. <laughs> Let me open the door a bit and we'll try her one more time. Good. And I'll open the back door here. Let a little bit of smoke out. Whew. Remember, I put oil in the cylinders too. Alrighty. I'll give her another shot of gas. Probably don't need the choke on. That's probably some of the issue here. She's choked. That's all right. For now, we'll be all right. All right, let's try it this way now. One more time. One more time. Oh, she stopped right on that bad spot. There she goes. Nope. Maybe all we get out of this until I pull that apart and do something with it. Oh, she's got a lot of compression, that's for sure. All right, let's try her. Nope, that's it. We're not going to get it. I'm going to pull and plug that. That's the best we're going to do, guys. Anyway, we know it'll start. Um, hard to tell. The condition of it like that but it did blow some pretty good stuff out she'd been running that was a successful i'm going to call it a success anyway i'm going to let the air out in here and uh, i'm going to pull the bell housing uh, the transmission and bell housing and that ring gear off and all that stuff because now that we have it running or we know it runs there's no need to have that on there grinding away it's hard on the starter and That'll be it. So thanks for coming along on this journey. And when we get the Bronco, we'll be doing some videos on the old Bronco. But in the meantime, while we're waiting for the Bronco, we're gonna be uh, continue to work on the uh, wheel arch and stuff on the Thunderbird. So there's lots of things to do, no shortage. A little bit blown out there with the light coming in at the door. But I uh, really appreciate everyone stayed this far in the, in the video and uh, Again, thanks for everyone. Uh, I got picked up. I wanted to say also, I picked up been picking up quite a few subscribers. Thank you for the new subscribers, and definitely a big thank you to all the subscribers that have been hanging in there through all the different uh, types of repairs that I've been doing here. I mean, it's not. I know it's not interesting to everyone, but there obviously there's something in it, or you wouldn't be here. Anyway, thanks a lot, everyone. You guys have a great weekend and week. Whenever I see you again. All right, catch you in the next one.